Um, so, I'm Curtis Hayes. I work for Core 3 Solutions. Uh, my relationship started with Lawrence Tech about a year ago. Uh, we um, started a relationship with uh, PEG in Career Services. So, if you get the opportunity to go sit with Career Services as you're starting your career search, I definitely recommend that using the, the website here for job postings and things like that. We posted three internship positions at our company. Last year, we hired three LTU students um, for those positions at our company last year. Sort of the exchange um, for that, I did mock interviews with architecture students um, with career services and did 12 or so interviews. Um, some of the students signed up for it, came in, we went through short half hour interviews and I did some feedback to prepare them for uh, graduation and, and getting out there and, and being a little bit more prepared. And that's, that's really the key. Um, my background is in IT as well as human resources. I was a recruiter for a couple different companies for a couple years. Um, I've really found my passion in IT, being a vice president for an organization, um, allowing me to use those recruiting skills um, and take over the hiring uh, part of our organization I do as well. We also have, a, um, and I'm part owner in a um, software product called Fogen, and I also have my own consulting company as well. Uh, Core 3 Solutions, we're a 13-year-old company uh, in Birmingham. We do web design, um, full, full service web design, uh, technical programming on the web, um, and also IT services company with UIT infrastructure. Um, and we're, we're very, very passionate about our work and what we do. Um, again, 14, 13, 14 years, all in-house team, directors, engineers, project managers, programmers, uh, marketing people, and they're all hand-picked. Um, because they live and breathe all the things that we do, and they're handpicked by me. Um, I have a very specific process I go through, and you're going to find that that process is different as you're starting to interview at all the different places you go to. You may sit down and have coffee with somebody. You may sit down and find you're doing five interviews with five different people. You may sit down and have a panel interview with five people at one time. Um, so that process changes, so there's, there's no sort of uh, game plan I can really give you other than what you need to do is prepare for that interview before you step into that door and sit down with whoever it is you're sitting down with. You know as much as you can about what the process looks like. It's very important. And I, I go over that process. So preparation is very important. Um, you can, can't really see the slides behind this, but I have some pictures and graphics behind here. Can people see the screen okay or should I dip the lights? Everybody okay? The text will be fine. My, Okay. Splashy graphics to liven it up might not you might not see those. Um, preparation is the key, and that's what I want to go over with everybody. Not just um, well, preparing for the interview is going to help you answer any of the questions. Uh, as much research as you can do on the company, as much as you can do on the actual job position itself. If you know anybody who works there or who has worked there, um, if you have a chance to do a phone interview before you do a, an interview and you actually sit down, asking questions and being prepared for that other interview is going to set you apart from other people. Um, so where do, you, where do you get that research? Uh, their website. is Almost every company out there has a website. Go to the website. Um, go to the about pages. Go to the history pages. Find out who their executive team is, who their managers are, how long they've been in business, why are they in business, what it is that they do. Um, go on LinkedIn. Do a company search, find out who works there, see if you have any connections. Everyone here, if you're out looking, should have a LinkedIn profile by now. You should be connecting with people. Those people are your gateway into somebody else. The best way you can find a job is through a recommendation. Somebody else who's saying, hey, you know, I recommend you go and interview here. I'll give you a, a um, head start, let somebody know you're coming in through HR or whatever, get your resume at the top of the pile. There's your opportunity. You're going to want to find out who else is working there, what do they do? Um, people are going to be writing about their company um, on their LinkedIn profiles, different things like that. So you can find a lot of information there. Searching for press releases. Say you're going to go work for an organization. They've got a new product coming out. They're entering a new service industry. They've been through some hard times. Whatever it may be, those can be things that you bring up um, in the interview process, asking questions about specific things. What are their goals for the next year, the next two years, the next three years? A lot of information you can find out through those. Uh, just doing Google searches. And the other thing that I recommend people do is doing uh, setting up a Google alert. 
So maybe you're pursuing a company. Um, I've read before that if you're um, taking your salary, let's say you're looking for a job that's fifty thousand uh, dollars a year salary, take that and divide it by ten, and then multiply that by a number of months. So fifty thousand dollars salary would be five months. That's how long it was going to take you from the time you start to the time you actually find the job that you're looking for. That's a, an average that they that you know the industry sort of put together. So if you're looking, you're going to graduate, you're looking for a $50,000 a year job, it's going to take you five months from the time you start your research, start sending out your resume, all of that, until you actually find your job on an average. So you have plenty of time when you start identifying companies, set up Google Alerts if you've never used it, do a Google search, Google Alerts, you put in the name of the organization. Every day you can get an email that's going to, anything that's happened online, new information, you're going to get an email that summarizes that information and you can go and find out. So I've had people who have come in and interviewed and interviewed with me and we put out a press release the day before. They knew that press release was there because they set up a Google Alert and they asked me a question about the press release that was the day before. That showed me that person was informed, they um, you know, care about what's going on within the company, um, how they can contribute, and, and that all got came into our dialogue and it made for a really good conversation between myself and the candidate versus somebody else who just, I can point out somebody who's just applied on Monster and done none, none of the research. Um, I, I know through that dialogue how much research they've done already and how prepared they are and how much they really want to work for my company. Curtis, just a real quick question. You were mentioning LinkedIn and the other mm -hmm. social media. I've heard estimates that networking is by far the most effective way to get leads and get yourself known along them. Along the lines of 70 to 80 percent of the people that find jobs find them that way. Yep. They're the same thing. Yep. I don't use Monster. Uh, very rarely have I used a Craigslist. Very rarely do I use recruiters unless I'm totally desperate. And there is a need for recruiting companies. Um, I know well in advance. I'm very prepared as far as the next position I want. And I'm talking and networking with everybody I know to identify the right fit for my organization. So my network knows I'm looking. If your network and my network are part of each other and you've talked to somebody that says you're looking, that person can put together a match. And that's, that's really the key. And I'd probably say 60% of the people I've hired that come in through some sort of connection that way. So definitely. And it's not just LinkedIn. Uh, pick up the phone and you know, call people as you're out with um, you know, your parents, friends, um, you know, whoever it may be, friends who you know that are already out in the workplace, ask, are there positions open at your company? How does your company hire? Do they have a website where they post positions? A lot of companies post positions internally. They have a career page. And you hear good things about a company, you want to go work there. There are companies that I recommend seeking out. Don't just put your resume out there and think an employer is going to seek you. You should be seeking out the companies that you want to work with. Identify the places you want to go. If you want to go to GM, you want to go to Ford you like the values and principles those companies stand for and that's where you want to go, you can seek those places out and you can get a job there if you're uh, pursuing enough. So what you should be looking for when you're doing this research, the job description. I mean, you've got to make sure this is a good fit skill-wise, first and foremost. So do you have the skill set? Do you have the education? Do you have the background for this position? If you do, great. Um, and you're going to want to see what those things are. What are, what are the requirements? What are they asking you to do? Those types of things. Those things allow you to build questions to ask in the actual interview. And you're going to have an opportunity to ask questions. And the questions you ask can set you apart from other candidates. But I'll go back to that. Um, why is the position open? If you have an opportunity to talk to somebody internally, if it's a recommendation, or you get a phone interview and you're on the phone with the manager before you get to come in, why is the position open? you're going to get information that is key that may help you solve the problem that hiring manager's having. Well, you know, the last person didn't have a specific skill set I needed. We realized it wasn't a good fit. They left and went to another organization. Well, what was that skill set that was missing? If that skill set is something you can provide, you're going to want to elaborate on that because you're going to take care of a pain that that manager was feeling. And you can come in and fill that void. Um, what's the rate of pay? You know, know what that is as soon as you can. Um, if it's a lot of times it's available and it's posted, there's a range, or you can get a range out of a manager because you're going to want to know 
if that range falls in with what you're looking for and you're comfortable with. The last thing you want is to get all the way through a process and then find out you're offered a position, but it's $20,000 less than what you wanted. Um, so, so lay out those expectations as soon as you can. If they're not willing to give you what it is, I say let them know what it is. You know, here's, here's what my expectations are. I've just graduated. I've done the research in my field. I should be making between this and this. Does that work out with you? Does that fall within the range you were thinking? Making sure you guys are meeting the same expectations, you're on the same page is important. Um, you don't want to waste your time or their time, get to the end, start to negotiate on an offer and you, you're not even close. Um, what's the company culture like? This is crucially important. If you get into an organization and you don't like what they stand for, you don't like the other people that you work with, it's not going to be a good fit. It's not going to mean something long term for you. So understanding the company culture is very important. Again, you can find that on LinkedIn, you can find that on Facebook. Um, you know, if, you have, if it's a fun culture and people do fun, creative things, you're going to see people posting videos on Facebook, people commenting about different things. You're going to see that type of stuff. If it's a more buttoned up type group, they're more corporate, professional, then you're going to see a, a corporate website, you're going to see a corporate professional Facebook page or LinkedIn page. Um, understand though, culture is also about what the company's values are, uh, what their mission is, uh, who's the type of organization that they support, those types of things as well. Uh, I, our, our values, which are very much a part of our culture, are creativity, vision, and leadership. If you do enough research, you'll be able to discover that. If you're an LTU student and you interview with my company and you've taken leadership courses here at LTU, you can use that background to come in and have a conversation with me about what you've learned about leadership, which is going to be important to me because that's ingrained in our culture and it's going to set you apart from other candidates. So that's how you can use culture to your advantage. Um, how should you dress for an interview? If you're on the phone with somebody, feel free to ask. Uh, we're a fairly casual environment. I've told people don't come in a suit. If I tell them don't come in a suit and they show up in a suit, points taken off. Um, if I didn't tell them we didn't have the conversation and they show up in a suit, fine. I'm totally okay with that. Um, but I would say ask, feel free to ask the question or ask somebody, um, like I said, that you may know. Try and get as much information as you can. Obviously, if you haven't had an opportunity to ask the question, dress to impress, wear a suit, um, or like this gentleman over here, sweater, white shirt, tie, you know, perfect. I think it's, you know, depending on the type of position you're going and interviewing for, I think that's a big thing. If you're going in for a a sales position, looking very, very professional, neat, clean cut is very important. If you're going in as, you know, uh, a body mechanic, you know, totally different culture, totally different type of position, you may not need to show up in a suit and tie. Uh, architecture may be totally different as well, where some firms are, you know, again, more, more professional type environment, some are more casual. The actual interview itself, um, some, some quick tips, because I could talk forever on this type of stuff, but write down notes, be specific, um, or write down notes for the specific question. If it's a difficult question or it's multi-parted, make sure you understand what the question is before you answer it. Very, very important. Um, don't go off track and answer something that I didn't ask. Uh, you know, listen to the question. If you need to have a notebook with you and write it down, I'll sometimes ask multi-parted questions write down the multi-parts, feel free to ask me to repeat it, and then go ahead and, and be ready. And feel free to take a moment and say, you know, I really want to think about something you know, that, that's really going to apply to your question. Can you give me a moment to think about something? Most people will be like, sure, take your time. You, know, you have your, an opportunity at that point to do your very best. There's really not, you know, I mean, there's time limits to how long the interview is going to take, but for you to rush through or not feel like you did the best job because you felt a little bit pressured or you didn't fully understand the questions, um, definitely not good. Um, never answer a question you didn't understand. Again, that's going to, to me, I relate it if I'm the manager. You're not going to listen to me later on when I give you a task. You're not going to ask me for clarification before you run off and do it. Um, so it's very important to me that you fully understand the question because then I'll know you'll fully understand the task I give you later on when you're actually employed with me. Never give more information than was asked. A key uh, tip I'm going to give you that I learned when I was young, right out of college, I was working with recruiters. I was recruiting at the time and fell into this trap. 
I was working with a recruiter trying to get a new job in the IT field. And the recruiter asked me a question. He was doing a mock interview with me, preparing me for another interview. And I just started rambling. And I started talking about the last three companies I worked with and all these great things I did. And he stopped me and said, no, I didn't ask you that. I asked you this. Only ask the specific question that was asked. I start out my interview by asking one question about the previous place you worked. I ask you something about the previous place you worked, not every place you worked. And I'll have people who just start telling me their whole life story right off the bat. It's totally not good. So make sure you understand the question, ask or, ask, answer specifically what was asked. No more information is needed. Um, so again, you know, if, if I ask you about the most re recent position held, just the most recent uh, position. Or if you say, uh, I have a better example, it's not the most recent position I had, it was you know, two positions ago, or I don't have any work experience, but I have a school experience I have where I worked on a project to be an example. Can I give you that example? The interviewee is going to be like, yeah, sounds great. Um, I understand you guys understand the, the STAR process, um, and this is key in behavioral interviewing questions, where you know, I'm going to know by the time I bring you in through my process, if you meet the skill requirements, what I'm now looking for is soft skills. And soft skills get sold to me in a behavioral interview. I know if you have soft skills based on how you answer behavioral type questions. So I'm going to ask you about a specific situation. I want you to tell me specifically about that situation. What was the task you did? What was the action you took? And what were the results? Very, very specific. If you start by just giving me the situation and you don't get to the action you took, I'm going to walk you through it to get you through the behavior I want. And maybe I get the right step out of it. But if you can just succinctly say, here's what I did, or here was the problem, here was the business case, here was the project I had to work on in school and why, here's the steps we took and what we did, and here was the result. That's what I'm looking for. And I may not have you even do those types of things for me, but what it tells me is you're able to take a task, understand that there's a problem involved, we need to solve that problem, there's specific results that need to be attained, and that I know how to measure those results so I can measure success. And that's important to me as a manager. Um, and have a game plan for how you'd approach your position. Knowing the job description, knowing maybe some of the pains the manager have been feeling, knowing some of the history about the company, knowing maybe where the company's going, in the future could allow you to put together a game plan that shows me that somebody's organized, um, they, they thought things out, they can create a plan, they can create goals. It could be a 30, 60, 90 day plan. It could be something as simple as, well, in the first 30 days, you know, I want to get to know my team, understand what your expectations are going to be of me, understand what my responsibility is. My next 60 days will be really, you know, understanding my tasks at hand, getting used to those types of things. By 90 days, I want to have very specific goals set out for me, you know, getting to these specific things, whatever they may be. But you can put together a game plan that outlines those types of things, which will set you apart from any other candidate. Uh, I did an interview with a, a sales guy who came in and basically laid out for me who he was going to sell to, how much he, value of business he was going to bring me, the whole game plan he had, and I, I was ready to hire him on the spot because he had already done the work that I had planned on doing with him in the first 30 days. He had already done it for me. So it shows he takes initiative, he knows how to plan, all those types of things are something I'm looking for. Those are the soft skills. So again, plans, goals, how do you evaluate success? Those are the types of things I'm looking for. So what are some tough questions you're gonna run into? And like I said, not every interview is gonna be the same. They're all going to be different. You know, understanding the process is very important. I have my own specific process. But you're going to run into some difficult questions. You're going to run into some odd questions. You're going to run into some things that catch you off guard. Um, being prepared for those is very important. Behavioral-based questions, I was searching online the other day. I found a document that's like 16 pages long, a few hundred questions. Go through those. Um, you know, do as many mock interviews as you can. Um, prepare as much as you can because it's going to prepare you for different types of questions. So here I ask a question, describe a work experience that captures your greatest strengths. What I'm looking for here is not for you to tell me what your strengths are. I want you to tell me a strength, your greatest strength, and then give me an example where you've actually applied that strength and what were the results. Again, a behavioral-based question. 
what have you learned in your previous job that would be a benefit of core three? How can you relate, um, maybe it's what would be done at school that would be a benefit to my company? So again, I'm looking for you know, previous work, previous examples of stuff you did that you can apply to me. What attracts you to core three? How does this fit in with your career goals? And how long would you want to stay here? How long would you want to stay here? Throws off a lot of people. Be prepared to answer that type of question. I mean, if it's only three to five years, and your next step in your career path is another path, let that manager know at that point. If it's a good fit, that person, I'm very willing to set somebody up on the next stage of their career, help mentor them, get them to the next part, and then see them on. Um, I'm totally great with that. I think it's, it's, it's fulfilling for me, it's fulfilling for the employee. So I'd rather know that off the bat. If you just say, I, you know, I want to find a place where I'm going to stay for the rest of my life, that really doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Um, especially in a lot of fields that I know a lot of you may be applying for. In IT, I, IT people rarely stay around in one company for five years. And to think right out of college you're going to stay with me for the next 30 isn't realistic. So I think being realistic about this, understanding where, where do I kind of want to go next level with my career development, I know where I need to start out now, but what are the next steps, and just laying out that game plan shows a manager you're very intelligent about where you want to go. And if I'm a manager and I want to keep you around, I'll find a way to keep you around. Good. i got to admit that that question and answer kind of surprises me. Yeah? Uh, now, I come from the old school. I worked at the same place for 40 years. So that's my perspective. So did my dad. Yeah. But uh, uh, I know I've heard studies that say most people your age coming out of college will probably have on average five to seven jobs. And oh, by the way, you'll probably have four or five careers sprinkled in with all those jobs. So I understand the expectation right. is out there, but I also know it takes time and money to train a new employee, and we were always brought up with the idea right. of it's an asset we're investing in, you hate to see them leave and take all that experience and training with them. Right, right. Well, and, and the realization that I make as an employer is if my company isn't set up to take you to the next level, I can't expect you to stay around to that next level. And so if I don't know that, my expectation can't be for somebody to, let's say I hired you as a HTML programmer, and you, you know, you're not gonna do HTML programming for the next 30 years. You've probably got something in mind. Now, if we're in the next stage with our company five years from now, and that's part of our plan, and it fits in with what you think the next stage is for you in five years, if I hire you, we're going to work out some sort of progression plan to get you to that, that point. That's my job as a manager, to get you there. Um, it's your job to take responsibility for that and do the things that you need to do to develop yourself as an employee. But for me to expect that in my small company, um, that was that's going to happen, I think it's very unrealistic. So if I look at somebody in my small company who says, I want to be with you, you know, for the rest of my career, I look at it and say, well, have you really thought this out? Um, now, if you're going to work for Ford, GM, Chrysler, you're going into an engineering position, there's lots of opportunity in a Fortune company, lots of different paths you can go, and you truly want to go somewhere and work somewhere for the next 30 years, then you would be interviewing at those types of places because it's a culture fit for you. Um, there are still companies out there that offer you know, pensions, good retirement plans, you can put in time. It's very rare those types of places exist anymore. So a lot of um, employees now, they, they go from place to place because they've got to the next stage in their career and there's another company who's willing to give them you know, the incentive to that next part because the pensions, the retirement plans, those types of things don't exist. So there's some sort of salary increase or next stage in my career that I get by making that leap. Um, again, the, what the trash use core three is important. How are we doing on time? Uh, I'm almost done. If you, yeah, I was going to say, if you could wrap up the next five, six months. I'd okay, agree. okay. Um, I had an employee who came in just recently. I gave this example. Yeah. And um, asked this question, what attracts you to core three? He said, well, I look at your website. Or I didn't look at your website. I had my mom look at it. And my mom said it, it looked like a good place to work. <laughs> I didn't hire that person. <laughs> You know, they don't, they don't even, they're coming into an interview and they don't even know who I am at that point. Why am I wasting my time with this person? Um, they're not taking it seriously. So um, that's going to get you out of the game right away. A uh, study indicated above all else organizations desire a person to manifest personal integrity. What does this mean to you? 
So here's a behavioral type question, looking at values and the integrity question. What I'm looking for is, um, what are you doing when I'm not looking? That's my definition to integrity. If I walk away from your desk, are you just going to pick up Facebook and play around online? Or are you going to do what I ask you to do? Um, if I ask you to do something and I want it done on Thursday at 12 o'clock, are you going to get it done at Thursday at 12 o'clock? You're not going to steal from me. Those types of things. That's what I'm looking for in that type of question. Somebody who doesn't fully understand that type of question um, is not really somebody who I want to work in my company because they're not going to understand our values, leadership, creativity, and vision. I think with the background you guys are getting here at Lawrence Tech, you should be getting those types of things and be able to answer those types of questions very well. Um, describe the planning model you would use in guiding the vision of Core 3 in your role. In order to answer this question, you have to know the vision of Core 3. Um, how would you set goals? How would you prioritize plans? How do you define and evaluate success? Again, I'm looking at your planning model. You know, do you set goals for yourself? Do you look back after you've accomplished something and, and was, it, was I successful with it? Could I have done it better if I, do it, if I had to do it again? Do you learn from your mistakes? Those are the types of things I'm looking for from that question. How would you approach, again, your job in the first 30, 60, 90 days? What would be your 90-day game plan? I do 90-day game plans with all my employees every 90 days. What are we looking to accomplish in the next 90 days? What are our goals? How are we going to grow, both as individuals and as a company? So those types of things are important to me. What are your salary expectations? So be ready to answer this question. A lot of times this becomes a back and forth. What are your expectations? What are your expectations? Um, I tend to be a person who's very direct. I, I like setting clear expectations. A lot of times when I'm interviewing for a candidate, I let them know my range. And if I give them an offer and it's within that range, I don't expect you to come back and counter me. Because we would have set expectations in some sort of conversation where I would have asked, are you okay with this range? If you said yes and I give you an offer in this range, you better accept it. If you counter, you better have a really good reason why you're countering. Uh, I've rescinded offers before where I've given an offer inside of a range that we've agreed on and then they wanted something that was more than that. I said sorry because I know later on down the road I'm going to have battles with this employee um, where we're going to set some sort of expectation and I'm going to get blindsided by something later on down the road. So very important. And then probably one of the most important parts is be ready to ask questions. Being able to ask questions is going to come from your research. So come prepared to ask questions for your research. If you have a game plan, show it. If you don't get to cover it at the end, do you have any questions for me? It's always going to happen. Uh, you know, well, I put together a short game plan of how I would approach my job in the first 90 days. Do you mind if we have a chance to go over that? Let me know what you think. Um, ask what opportunities are there for career development, what kinds of trainings are offered. Um, you can ask about benefit packages. I wouldn't necessarily get into specific about benefits in an actual interview unless benefits are a deal breaker for you. If you absolutely have to have health care and you need to know whether or not this company offers health care, ask, do you offer health care? You don't need to get into details as far as what's your copay, what's this, what's that. Find out if they have what you're looking for. If they do, great, you know, get that offer. Um, what challenges are the term currently, team currently facing? How do you see this position helping over, overcome those challenges? Again, you're looking at the pains that this person's having, how you can help overcome those pains. What skills um, does this manager not have currently with the team that you might be looking for in a new hire? So I'm really looking for somebody who's a strategic thinker. Oh, well, I've taken a personality test in my leadership training at Lawrence Tech, and strategic is one of my core strengths. Let me tell you how to use my strategic strength in a team environment at school. And you can give that an example. That's going to set you apart. What's the overall structure of the company or the department? What are the next steps in the interview process? You always want to know what the process looks like. You never want to walk out of an interview and think, well, when's he going to call me next? When's she going to call me? Um, no, you know, always leave having clear knowledge of, okay, I'm going to get a call in the next 30 days, or I'm going to get an email, or, you know, there's a second interview in the process, and I know it's going to be with these specific people. That type of information is very important. And then follow up. Write a thank you letter immediately. This isn't, you're not dating somebody, you don't need to wait two or three days. Go home, write a letter, throw a stamp on it, mail it out, send an email if you think it's appropriate, 
thanking them for their time, recapping the conversation. If you felt there were key questions you answered that you thought you did really well on, and maybe there was a good dialogue that happened, reinforce those questions um, and your answers in an email. Um, I do this thing in, in sales we call by the numbers. Who are you? Um, so that would be who's the employer? Who are you? What are your strengths? And, and what can you do for them? Being able to put that concisely in about two or three paragraphs is very important. Here's you, and I see where your company's at, the problems you're facing, the team that you have. Here's me and the skill sets and the talents that I have in my experience. Here's how I think we can put those two together and have a really successful relationship. In a nutshell, that's what you're trying to put together in a follow-up email. You're selling yourself. Have, at that point in time, have your letters of recommendation. Um, on your resume, have links to your LinkedIn. Hopefully, people have recommended you on LinkedIn. Professors, previous employers, um, they could be classmates who you worked with on a project together. Have them write specifically about the project and recommend you. Um, after uh, an interview one time, I did a phone interview first with an employee. Immediately after that interview, she sent me an email. That email, and it was for an online marketing position, she sent me her LinkedIn profile, says, please take a look at my LinkedIn profile. I have a lot of recommendations here of previous employers and clients that I work with. Well, she used social media in a way that she's supposed to use when I'm going to hire, if I were to hire her. She knew exactly what to do. I brought her in for an interview. It was a great interview, and I, and I hired her. So very important you do those types of things. Um, real quick, um, I use technology careers because that's really what I'm in. These are the types of skill sets that I'm looking for, these types of traits. Problem skill solving. Can you communicate verbally? non-verbally, so the email, communication, a letter, those types of things, which are written skills. Can you work in teams? Are you going to be loyal? Do you have life skills, finances, personal challenges? How do you manage your personal life? Most problems in business are personal problems. If you have a well-balanced personal and work life, you're going to be a good fit for my company. Um, having a positive attitude and being more motivated, and are you employable, adaptable, creative, creative flexible, can you plan, can you organize, and can you focus? These are all things I look for. And I figure those out with my questions. So again, be prepared, take responsibility, have patience, but be persistent. Treat it as though you're selling yourself. You're a salesperson, you're the product. Go out there and sell yourself. Um, in the interview, listen to questions, only ask specifically what was asked. Don't dominate the time or the conversation, and be confident. So, questions for me? I've got just a couple. Sure. If you could back up to your follow-up slide. Uh, discussion I've had in all my classes, thank you notes, just like mom always taught us. Mm -hmm. Email versus paper. Mm -hmm. When is which appropriate? Does it depend on the culture of the company? I've told some students sometimes you can get a feel for the person you interviewed with as far as which way they might prefer to go if they're really computer savvy or using a lot versus you don't even see a terminal on their desk. Right. Get to. Right. Any other just in general advice you could give with respect to that question? Uh, don't be afraid to ask. So if you're walking out of an interview, you know, you mind if I shoot you a follow-up email? So you can ask there. Most people say yes. Um, it shows you're, you're forward, you know, you're, you're forward in the right way, you know, you're asking, you're asking a, a, a good question. Um, if it's a phone interview or something that happens not face-to-face, -face, I'd say, and you have the person's email address, they've given it to you, you didn't go and find it like on their website or in their LinkedIn profile, but they've, they've given you their business card. The fact that they've given you their business card or they've already emailed you gives you permission to email them. So go ahead and do that. If, they're, if you're short on time, like this manager's making a decision and they've told you, I plan on making a decision in the next 24 hours, send an email. You don't have time to go home and put, a, you know, put together a letter and try and overnight it. If they're, you know, we've got two weeks to make this process, there's going to be another stage, another interview, then go ahead and do the, the letter. And it could be as simple as, you know, go to Hallmark or Target or wherever, buy, you know, $5 box of like 10 thank you notes, the little cards, and just fill out thank you know a little thank you. It's gonna be the same one to different employers. You know, just write a personal message on it. Um, that's even. I mean, you're not gonna get into the whole who are you, who am I, what can I do for you type stuff. 
but at least it's you know personal enough that you know there's something nice that goes along with there. If you can do something a little bit more elaborate in an actual you know larger envelope, you print something up or write something up, then go ahead and do it. And then one other point, your your third point there. What can I do for you? If you back up one more slide. Uh, I told students that asking questions about what opportunities for my career development, what kind of training for me, I don't want them to go in and be focused on themselves. It's what can they do for you. They're selling themselves. I've got something you need and this is what it is. So it's good to know those things, but I always try to couch it in terms of I know that uh, you're developing a new product in this field and that happens to be an interest of mine. Will you have any opportunities for me to develop my career in that area? Exactly. Try to do it that way. Yep, yep. So it's a win-win sort of situation. So I don't have this as career advancement. If I would have put advancement here, that'd be different. Like, is there an opportunity for me to be a manager or get to the next stage or something like that? That's not what you're looking for. But if I have an opportunity to come in on a project and provide my skills, but also learn something at the same time. That I view as career development, um, so very important. And then I think, you know, you're, I, I totally agree, you're not looking in, unless it's an internship, I think you have you know, every right if it's an internship. What am I gonna learn? Because an internship should be about you learning. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're not being paid. If you're not being paid, you better be learning 100%. Um, if you're being paid, it's a, it's a little give and take. You should be learning, but also should be helping out that employer. Good. Any other? Yes, Mr. Nunn. Of course, yes. you, didn't, um, you didn't really talk much about like body language, per se. Is there any like wrong body language to do in an interview? Like, I know arms, you know, arms crossed is something like, you know, like you're not really open to, you know, communication, but... Sure. Um, I think there's... There's, there's huge red flags, so I wouldn't say there's like any specific posture or, I mean, you want to carry yourself, and you know, I mentioned being confident. You want, to, you want to carry yourself in a very confident way, not overconfident, but just that, you know, almost in a way that you, you belong there um, while being, I'm trying to think of the best way. I mean, I see very quickly somebody who fits in, especially when we have a smaller company, and even if it's a larger company, you're going to be hiring eventually, or you're going to be interviewing with a manager who has a smaller team, and he wants to make sure you're going to fit in with that team. So, and he's going to want to make sure he's comfortable with you having a dialogue with you at some point. You're going to have meetings in his office or meetings around the conference table. How are you going to carry yourself? If you're slouched in your chair, um, you know, or, or kind of like leaning over the desk, or if you're like this, um, you know, those types of, if you're fidgety, you know, those types of things don't kind of have the conversation really go the right way. I think by having a pen and a notepad, even if you don't take any notes, I think it forces you to, you know, almost carry yourself a little bit differently. I mean, if you have a table in front of you, you know, you can sit there at the table, have your notepad out in front of you, have a pen, take some notes, you know, be ready with some of the questions you may ask. You know, have questions ready you're going to ask so you don't forget them on the notepad, flip back to those and say, you know, I had some questions prepared. Can we go ahead and go through these now? Um, you know, it shows you're, you're prepared, you're taking notes, all those things that I'm going to want to see. So I think that helps. Uh, you know, we, we talked about how you should dress, you know, handshake, um, you know, yeah, firm, smile, make on, eye contact with me. Uh, again, I'm just going to want to make sure we connect. If we don't connect and I'm the hiring manager, that's a problem. Um, a lot of times we'll get into personal questions. Um, you know, I ask a question, do you take regular vacation? Because I like a balanced work life and um, personal life. So we'll get into a conversation. You know, I go up north. You know, my parents have a cabin up north. We go up north every summer. We have a boat, a lake, and, you know, we like to do this, this, and this. And well, that starts a conversation. I think it brings the, the, level of the conversation down to a more comfortable area. And a lot of times I'll do those a little bit earlier on in an interview to maybe lighten it up a little bit, let everybody get a little bit more comfortable and allow the conversation to progress. But if 
you don't carry yourself very well through that part, then things are going to go downhill. I mean, I've seen people who just seem completely disinterested by the way they carry themselves. And I, I, shot, I sh shorten an interview <laughs> and skip questions because I know I'm wasting my time at that point. How long does a typical interview, if there is such a thing, normally last? With me, I'm usually 90 minutes. Um, and we do, I have a multi-phase approach. First, I look at your resume. Do you have the skills I'm looking for? It's the most important thing from the resume. I do a phone interview. My phone interview starts with 10 minutes of me talking about the position, the company, um, making sure you're interested. If you are, we start to talk about you a little bit. I tell you about what the process is gonna look like. And then we, and if, I'm, if I'm then interested, Maybe I'll call you back to schedule an interview, or maybe I'll schedule an interview at that point. I'm the gatekeeper. You interview with me first. So we'll do sort of behavioral-based interview for 90 minutes. If you get through me and I'm not the hiring manager, you're going to have another interview with whoever the manager is and will likely appear. That interview is more casual. I've had an opportunity to you know, elaborate on the candidate with the team, strengths, um, you know, how they answered some of the questions, why I think they're a good fit. They're going to take notes and then try and elaborate on those in greater detail in that second interview. So it's not, I'm not always, at, they're not, they're not uh, as organized as my interview is, where I'm coming in with very, very specific questions I'm going to ask. Now, to your point, Mr. Portia, we were going to have the uh, uh, mock interviews, and that was one of the things we were going to talk about a little bit is, your appearance, your presence, the eye contact, which I assume you like to see direct eye contact. Uh, yeah, yeah. If I'm if I'm context. having a conversation with you, we're looking at eye. If you're looking over here while I'm talking to you, that right. you know that's not good. So, definitely. but I, I think we'll skip the mock interviews, even though I had my two smartest and best looking students ready to go tonight. Thank you. Uh, I I think. We understand just by talking about it what we were going to try and demonstrate with the mock interview. So yeah. I, I'm not sure we need to do okay. that. Were there other questions people had? Uh, I did have one more, for actually two. Okay. Hopefully one's a short one. Uh, the assignment for tonight was turning in their cover letter and resume for a job application. Do you accept those in paper form? Do you do everything online? What is the state of the resume and cover letter, uh, cover letter at Core 3 Solutions? At Core 3 Solutions, anything. I'll post a job online. We have a career section. If there's nothing posted, you can still submit your resume. I've had people mail stuff to me. Um, I've had people hand deliver. I was just, we just were at this LPU conference. I had a graphic designer. She came up to me and said, here's my portfolio. She was ready. She knew I was going to be there. She knew our company, she wanted to present herself, and she handed it to me right there. She's seeking us, I'm not seeking her. Um, so that, that's gonna set her apart a little bit. I think it depends on the position. You know, I was working with architecture students and they have to put together their portfolios, you know, all their work, you know, there's a specific you way to do that. You about portfolios, guys? I didn't, get, I didn't tell them to say that. They do look at those things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I'm looking at a graphic designer, most graphic designers, especially if you're designing for web, you have some sort of online portfolio. So do you have your own personal website with work that you've done? Um, even if you're a programmer, you may have work that you've done on other sites. One of the programmers we hired here had done work for LTU, some of the projects out of career services, different things like that. I got to look at examples of work, so they had their portfolio. What you're going to have to do is find out what the process is at the company that you're applying at. You know, I work for Philips Electronics, Fortune Company. Um, you know, you've got to get through HR before you ever get to a manager. There's a lot of policies in place. So you have to go to their career website on their global website. You have to search by country because they're a global country. You've got to narrow down what specifically you're looking for, see if there's a position available, attach your resume, cover letter, and wait. If you know somebody, you can make a phone call and say, I submitted my resume on the career site. Can you let somebody in HR know it's there and hand pick it out of the pot? If you're interviewing at Ford, GM, Chrysler, those types of places, you're gonna have to, they have career sites. So you're gonna have to go through the career webpage, most likely. One last question on uh, cover letters. This is a question I've had for years. A good way to close a cover letter. 
you have the traditional, I look forward to talking with you again in the future. Uh, please contact me if you have any questions or want to set up an appointment. You have the other side, which is I will contact you in two to three weeks to set up a time. And right. meet. I wouldn't do that. Okay. I wouldn't be that direct to think that you're going to set up time with me. Um, well, a cover letter can't be generic. I think you can have a template, but you have to do your research on the company, and your cover letter should always be speaking about the company. Again, in a similar way that I put, who are you, who am I, and what can I do for you? Even your cover letter should be in some sort of format. So that means you're going to have to tailor your cover letter to every place you interview at. That's why I think it's a long process. You've got to do your research first. It's going to show, you're going to stand out. If I post a position, I get 50 resumes, and somebody's tailored their cover letter, and then they've done their research, you go to the top of the pile. Because um, you've taken the extra effort outside of everybody else. Uh, closing it, I think, I, I, again, applying back how you're going to use your skills, your talents, your past experience to what my company needs are is, is very important in that closing statement. I'd love to have the opportunity to have a conversation with you about how I could apply my skill set in this area to your whatever it is. But you still leave the onus on you to follow up with study on an interview or whatever. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Especially if you don't know who the audience is on the other side. You know, if it's going to an HR manager first or if it's going directly to the manager. But sometimes you don't know. So you can't you can't say at that point I'm going to follow up with you if you don't know the person. Now, if we've had a previous conversation, you know, that might be different. I think that's where you have to tailor that, that cover letter to the audience. You always, any communication has to be tailored to the audience. Again, if you don't know who the audience is, it's going to be dear sir or madam, dear hiring manager, dear HR, you know, those types of things, and closing in the same way. If you've met me, we've had a conversation, and now you're, you see I have a position open, then you can be a little bit more forward and direct. Uh, yes, what's your question? Um, if you're like really impressed with something that the company's done recently, would you like it's like it's not a question or anything? You just want to like throw it out there. Like for instance, I was doing research on Core Three, and like just their website, I was really impressed by it. specifically like the mobile website. I was really impressed with. Like would would I even mention that at all? Or because like yeah. the high person hiring me is an SO person who was doing the website, but if I told them I'm impressed with that specific thing. But, okay. but I, could, I could dialogue with you about that. Because okay. being a smaller company, I know about that. And we've done, so the conversation you and I could have, if you were to ask me that, say, you know, I was on your website, I was on it with my phone, I've noticed the mobile compatibility, which a lot of websites don't have that. How did you guys accomplish that? Right, so then it starts a conversation between you and I that doesn't have to be specific to your job itself. And again, you know, enlighten, it's a more personal conversation, and lightens the mood a little bit, and we can have a dialogue about that. And I can, you know, tell you, well, our team did some research, we're trying out some new mobile compatibility for our clients, we figured it'd be important for us to test out on our own website, we should be the ones being able to do it if we're demoing it to our clients, and so, you know, maybe we got into a little bit more detail as far as what that was. So yeah. that's very impressive that, you know, you did that. If I was going to do a mock interview with you, and you would have brought that up. It shows you're being, that Mr. Guest is being proactive and has an interest. In right, right, right. Very good. Right. Very important. So. Any other questions? Starts. Starts Just oh. that, um, when, when you receive uh, resumes unsolicited, do you respond to them or do you just... No, I don't. Um, I try to. Actually, I forgot a step in my process. Before the phone interview, I, I do a, what I call the one foot fence. We even do this in sales. I send you out five questions in an email, and I want those responses to those questions. Um, if you, so again, I'm, I'm looking for you know, the communication, how much research have you done, is this really a good fit, um, and we'll, we'll start that there. If at that point I've engaged with you and I'm not going to move any further, then I'll let you know. But if you just submit, I mean, I could get 100 resumes for a position, and I can't reply to 100 people. I'd like to. I think, you know, I think feel free to follow up, you know, if you've sent your resume, especially if you know where it's going, who the recipient of it is, to follow up and have you made a decision, you know, I haven't heard anything in two weeks. Um, a lot of times I'll post a position and I'm not ready to hire it for three months. 
So I may reply to you and say, I did get your resume. We're going through the process, just collecting resumes. We haven't gone on to the second stage yet. If you meet, you know, and fit the next stage, you'll hear from me by this date. And that, that at least keeps you in the loop. Any other questions? Now is your chance. Okay. You can share this presentation. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. I, That's I, great. I hope we'll get an opportunity to offer a few more internships. They'll be on the LTU website here if we do, and you know, okay. feel free to apply to those. And um, I hope that this spring too, we'll do some mock interviews again with Career Services. If you see those posted, and you want to get get on them, talk to people at Career That's Services. Right. You know, I want to do an interview, a mock interview, get signed up. They're a half hour long. I look over your resume. That's a we great go through, to do We that. go through about you mentioned that, Mr. 15 Mr. questions, and then we dialogue on the 15 questions. I give you all my notes afterwards if you want to follow up with me after that. I actually had one girl who did one of the mock interviews, and I lined her up with another interview because I have a friend who's an architect. So, you know, you never know what's going to come out of those. Well, thank you again for your time. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for, uh, I want to show a small gift of appreciation. Oh, appreciate that. I definitely Absolutely. love Thank you. Starbucks. Well, they just happen to have a wrapper for it. <laughs> no, not at all. But uh, that was really very helpful. It covered some material we've discussed before and some other things that we haven't. So it's always good to get another perspective on these things. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gaston and Mr. Teach, again, thank you. Appreciate you coming prepared, but I think we accomplished the objective. Great.